And welcome into our studios in Irving. Chris Bunn and Rini Angolia. We're going to hear from Coach Silverfield in just a minute. But when you look back, first season to go 8-3, and three, but he had a lot of talent. He's got some holes to fill, though. Brady White, at quarterback, no longer there. Where is the most important question for him? It's still, it's quarterback, right? And so whoever wins that job, listen, you got to get the ball in the hands of Calvin Austin because he had such a breakout <laughs> year last year for them. And, and as you said, Chris, a lot of talent on this team. You get that quarterback solidified, and I think they'll be fine. And it, it, this, this is one of the programs in this conference that has been excellent over the last few years. And it's, uh, they've had a great run, and, and Coach Silverfield is carrying on where it left off from uh, later years. And as we showed you, pick fifth in the preseason poll. Coach Silverfield joins us now. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. When you look back at last year, there was so much chaos but still an 8-3 season. What would you learn from that that you've taken into this year? Yeah, you're right. You know, first year as a oh, full-time head coach, uh, quite a bit of things to learn from. But the one thing I took away from it is all these returning players that are here on our roster now are fighters, right? They persevered through a lot. Uh, a lot of things could have occurred last year with opt-outs. And the group of young men that were representing the University of Memphis this 2021 football season, uh, they're a bunch of fighters, tough young men that uh, of high character, uh, they're going to go out there day in and day out and, and, and put forward on the name on the front of their jersey and the name on the back. So really excited about this group of men. Well, as we do this Media Days virtually, we're going to let Chuck Sullivan come in, and he is going to direct the traffic for the media members that will ask the questions over Zoom. Take it away, Chuck. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Coach. Uh, we'll get started with the questioning with uh, Evan Barnes from the Memphis Commercial Appeal, please. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, Ryan, first of all, happy birthday. Um, second of all, um, obviously, the quarterback battle is going to be the main theme going into camp starting this week. Um, you've been now a part of two past quarterback competitions. How do you bring that experience into this now being your decision as you decide kind of who's going to take over the keys to this this offense? Yeah, uh, thanks, Evan, for those wishes. But uh, you're exactly right from Paxton Lynch uh, to Riley Ferguson to Brady White, right, the all-time winningest quarterback in program history. Uh, those are big shoes to fill. And uh, we're excited about the competition. Like I said, we have four capable bodies uh, that will be in there competing for the quarterback spot. I'm excited about all of them. Uh, there's no panic. I think uh, our, our players have great faith on the offensive side of the ball. Whoever we put back there uh, will lead us, and, and we'll have a successful offense like we've had in the past. But, uh, look, it, that's the fun thing, right? We've got to throw the ball out there on Friday, let the guys compete, and uh, day in and day out, you know, will we name a starter in week one? I don't know. And maybe a couple weeks into training camp, but uh, we'll make sure that uh, all everybody that's involved will be pleased with the, the decision and whoever we decide to stick with, uh, all hands on deck moving forward. We'll go next to Isaac Simpson from Tiger Sports Report, please. Hey, first off, happy birthday, Coach. Thanks, Isaac. Um, going back to last year, uh, up until now, and you kind of talked about this in, in the opening, how much have how much is navigating this new world with COVID, the, the protocols, and everything like that? How much of an impact has that had, and, and how tough has that been to kind of navigate? Yeah, you know, I was talking earlier on the radio that uh, who would ever thought my first three months on the job would have been my easiest, right? Preparing for a cotton ball and putting together a staff. Uh, but ever since then, right, with the pandemic, COVID, uh, dealing with the transfer portal, NIL, and, and talk of conferences, right? It's the day and age of me being able to sit in my office and watch phone for 100 hours and just do X's, those are long gone. Uh, but you know, the, the great thing about this is we've got a wonderful staff. Uh, they've been hugely supportive of everything administration. But again, credit goes to our young men. Our players are the ones that uh, day in and day out, they don't bat an eye. They understand there's things going on uh, throughout our world. Uh, they've been very supportive of me. And, and likewise, uh, just again, I'm, I'm just so honored to be able to coach these guys. And we got each other's back. So no matter what happens, all right, I just keep waiting. There's something else will happen and we'll be uh, chins up held high and ready to roll with whatever comes. We'll go next to Mike Seed from WREG TV in Memphis, please. Hey, Ryan, how you doing today? Good, Mike, how are you doing? Good, um, I know there's you really don't make much of preseason expectations, but anything that may motivate your team when you saw the, the preseason media poll that comes out and has the Tigers fifth going into the conference race this year. Just your thoughts on that and, and anything you can do to maybe motivate your team going into a new season. 
Yeah, I mean, look, the, the preseason polls are, are great. It's, it's for people to talk about and to be able to answer questions on. But uh, once that ball gets kicked off on September 4th, the preseason poll doesn't mean a darn thing. Uh, one of the things I like about it is, guess what? Our guys have a chip on their shoulder. Uh, that's the way I've always been. I know our, our team's the same way. So uh, if they rank us first or last, it doesn't matter. we got work to do. Uh, we're excited about training camp and the upcoming games, uh, one day at a time, one game at a time. So that's just part of it. Uh, look, let's talk about in January, see where we end up in the poll. We'll go next to Frank Bonner from the Daily Memphian, please. Hey, Ryan, nice to meet you. How's it going? Frank, welcome aboard. Welcome to Memphis. I appreciate you. I just want to ask, um, with uh, the, the, the COVID situation, how do you approach the conversation of vac vaccines with your players? Yeah, Frank, I, I think that's the biggest thing, just with like a lot of issues that we're dealing with uh, throughout our world is it's about education, right? I talk to our young men about it. We certainly don't force anything, um, but understanding and educating what the vaccine can do about this uh, pandemic and what's occurring. That's the biggest thing, right? Whether we have a doctor come in and talk to those guys, or we send them educational articles, or even things that are occurring throughout the NFL, uh, that are other places that are occurring, other teams uh, in our conference that you know are getting vaccinated. So it's an educational piece. Uh, we're there to answer any questions. We've got a wonderful medical staff uh, that can be there uh, to answer questions as well. So. It all goes back to making sure that we are supplying them uh, with whatever information they need, also that the vaccine is readily available if they choose to do so. Are you um, at liberty to tell what, what percentage of your players are vaccinated? Yeah, by the time the season starts, we'll be uh, well over 80%. So uh, is that good? Sure, but you know, ideally we wanna to get to 100% and we're gonna to continue to educate. And uh, that's the nice thing is our guys understand not only the nature of this disease, what it could do from a health standpoint, but also uh, as far as the dynamics it could play onto a football season. I appreciate you, Ryan. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Clayton Collier from WATN-TV in Memphis, please. And uh, first of all, happy birthday. Um, just, to, uh, you know, going in, Mike had touched on it there with the preseason media poll, but do you subscribe to, to trying to have poster board material fit, you know, obviously isn't, isn't where you'd want to be um, for this team. Is that the messaging that you, that you want to try to subscribe to? Yeah, Clayton, look, I mean, I, I think our guys are plenty motivated. So if it's a media preseason poll uh, that what people believe that we should be, uh, that's great. But our, I think our guys are all motivated. Our, our goal uh, year in, year out is to compete for the championship. Our guys know that. Uh, minimum expectation to go to bowl games but uh, like I said it's a one day approach at a time one game approach uh, with the right mindset that when the dust settles and January comes we'll look back and hopefully have a successful season but uh, look I, I think a lot of our players here at the University of Memphis uh, come from the same background and mindset of me as hey great continue to doubt us we'll prove you all wrong and that's the way kind of I've lived my life for 23 years of coaching and I know our players feel the same uh, but whatever motivation it takes, we'll find it in any form or fashion and uh, excited to get going. I'll take the next question from Dan Tortora, please. Wake up call DT. Coach, taking a look at college football playoff expansion, uh, the, the thought of 12 being the future, just what you think that means for the American athletic and, and hopefully college football in general? Yeah, Dan, I think it's wonderful. Uh, I think it's a great right, be able to expand the playoffs to 12 teams. It gives every conference an opportunity, and I think it's important. It, it helps us in recruiting. I think our current players understand what that could mean uh, for our conference and for our team as well. Uh, obviously, you got to handle your business within the AAC, but I think what it does is it kind of lets you know that this group of five uh, notion that people are saying, it no longer really exists. We've always called ourselves the P6. I think our conference, the AAC, has proven year in, year out uh, that it belongs with the quote unquote, bigger names in college football. And I think there's a lot of excitement about that. Uh, obviously it won't affect us this season, but moving forward, uh, the more teams you can add, the merrier. And we hope to be a part of that when that cycle rolls around. And, and Memphis, as, as far as sending players up before you came into Memphis, a lot of guys in the backfield heading off into the NFL. What can you tell us about the backfield this year and the talent that you have? Yeah, this is now my sixth year at Memphis, and uh, you're exactly right. Let, let's call it what it is. We have five NFL running backs in the league right now. And, um, we, you know, we've got nine running backs on our roster right now. Uh, do we have five of them that are currently possible NFL players on that of those nine? I'm not sure, but uh, they compete. They work hard. Really excited about our backfield. 
uh, we'd like to hang the hat on running the football here. And, uh, that, you know, I think if we do that, it sets up bigger things, right? You guys will have the opportunity to meet with Calvin Austin. Believe me, I promise you, Calvin wants us to be able to run the ball because that opens up the deep shot down the field for him and it frees up time for our quarterbacks. Um, so, you know, look, we're going to continue to look at our running backs. Uh, we got a lot of guys that uh, we think are capable. You know, we started a walk-on in the game versus Navy. We started six different running backs last season. I don't want to be in that spot this year. I'd like to be able to set on or two or three bell cows and go from there. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. I'll take another question from Evan Barnes, please. Memphis Commercial Appeal. Brian, you kind of just mentioned it with Calvin. Um, we know that he's a dynamic receiver. Is there is there kind of any sense for what, with what he brings that you guys may try to, you know, find creative ways to just kind of use and take advantage of his, of his speed a little bit in production? Yeah, you're right. I mean, the biggest thing we can do is find ways to get Calvin the football. And that's our job as a coaching staff to be creative with that. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Calvin has really worked hard on improving his route running. Uh, he'll be the first to admit, man, last year was just scratching the surface and the, the sky's the limit for him and what he's capable of doing. He's worked really hard this offseason to detail uh, his game. And I think we're going to be able to see that on the field. It's going to be on full display this season. All those things that he's capable of doing. Uh, he's taken more pride in being a blocker, doing different things. Uh, he's bought into every unit of special teams. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, look, let's call it what it is. Getting the ball in Calvin Austin's hands is a smart decision by us as a coaching staff, and we're going to continue to be creative and find ways. I know he's excited. The nice thing about him, he's a smart young man. We feel like we can line him up all over the field, uh, and he'll do it so without missing a beat. We'll go next to Brian Moss, please, Tiger Sports Report. Hey, Coach, in years past, uh, other schools would poach either your offensive or defensive uh, coordinators, but you, you were able to keep Coach Johns and Coach McIntyre. How important is that to you to have them uh, on board for another year? Yeah, you're exactly right. Look, having continuity um, and with what we want to do, uh, you know, Coach McIntyre's uh, don't even need to speak on, you know, his past head coaching experiences, which have been huge for us. Uh, it's good for guys like Quindell Johnson to be able to come in and, and realize another year in this defense how much more success we can have. I think it's great for our defense, especially the depth we have, uh, to be able to go in and say, okay, we understand this scheme. We understand what we're trying to get done uh, week in and week out. And then, you know, offensively, Kevin Johns will continue to carry the torch. Um, and our players understand what he's demanding uh, every single day from them. But that continuity uh, with the offense and defense of the coordinators is huge. I uh, would like to continue to do that, obviously want them to be able to reach whatever goals and hopes they may have. Um, but I think a lot of people are really happy here at Memphis. We'll take the next one from Steve Helwick from uh, SB Nation, please. Hi, Coach. Uh, two years ago, Calvin Austin wasn't even on scholarship. And what are the qualities that you've seen from him that have allowed him to have this rapid ascension? And how vital will he be to the program now when the offense loses so many of your leaders over the past year, like Brady White, DeMonte Poxy, Kenneth Gainwell, Taj Washington. How's Calvin going to help lead that? Yeah, well, you're exactly right. I mean, it, last year was Calvin's first full year on scholarship, and he certainly deserved it. And uh, that's what I said earlier. He's just scratching the surface of what he's capable of. And he'll be the first one to sit down and say, you're exactly right. I want to continue to work things to improve upon study game film study ways to continue to improve uh, him's overall self as a wide receiver. And it is important because he realizes he's looking around, right? And he even did so last year. I think that's one of the reasons why his production went up with the loss of guys that opted out uh, during the season. He knew that he needed to uh, rise to the top and he did so. And I think he proves it week in and week out on the field. And he has that understanding and he'll continue to work. And you know, you asked how was he able to do so? Well, I think Calvin's a, a hungry young man. He realized that, that he is capable of achieving a lot of great things, uh, not only in his career at the University of Memphis, but beyond. And uh, what I appreciate about him is his attitude, his mindset, his approach hasn't changed. It hasn't wavered. Uh, I can promise you, he, he's going to have a lot of great individual stats this year. But if you ask him what the thing he wants to do, it's win a championship. And uh, he'll be remembered as one of our greats. But, you know, more than anything, he wants to walk away with a conference championship ring. And he puts in that work every single day. And we'll take a question from Trace Trilco, Sons of UCF, please. Uh, Coach, what are your thoughts on the league's position that games impacted by COVID will not be rescheduled and, in fact, may be forfeited? Yeah, look, I understand it. Commissioner Resco's got to do uh, exactly what he needs to do. 
I think we're at this point where everybody understands the severity of what COVID can do. Uh, look, we, we saw firsthand, and so did our conference, and so did college football throughout, saw the consequences that are going to occur with COVID. That's why we'll continue to educate our guys on being vaccinated and making smart decisions with everything they do. So, look, it's part of it. Uh, we understand there's cancellations and forfeitures may occur. I just hope that uh, our Memphis football players understand the severity of what we're dealing with, uh, not only at a college football level, but at a worldwide pandemic. So uh, I believe our guys understand it. We'll continue to educate them, but uh, that's part of it is. And if we happen to have to cancel a game because uh, of COVID, and that's part of it. And if forfeiture comes, we understand that. But uh, we'll continue to push and talk to our guys in the right direction. Thank you so much, head coach Ryan Silverfield. Happy birthday, by the way. Sorry we had to take up some of your time on your special day. Hopefully you get a chance to uh, celebrate or enjoy a nice dinner. Well, glad I could share it with you guys. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you. I don't know how much the truth there is that, that he wants to spend his birthday with us. I, I thought it was interesting what he said about Calvin Austin. I mean, we, we look, the guy gets the ball and he gets some open space and he's gone. But there's yeah. a lot to learn about the position in terms of route running, footwork, from what you saw on film from him last year, where are some of those areas he can improve upon? Yeah, and so he is a track star. So a lot of times when you see track stars transition to football, it's and he mentioned, Coach Silverfield mentioned, it's running routes. And so you just want to be sharpened as much as you can in that. And he worked on that in the offseason. There's no doubt about it. Everything, he's got everything else, the speed, athleticism, excellent hands. But running those routes and working on pass ball, or uh, blocking downfield as a receiver because all great receivers also block for their running backs downfield. So he's working on all those games. And I love the fact that he does have a little chip on his shoulder, even though he had an unbelievable breakout year last year. So yeah. look for Kelvin Austin to explode once again this season. And he said they want to run the ball, and last year was such a disappointment that we didn't get to see Kenneth Gainwell again. Yeah. But that also opened the door for some other guys to step up who we will all see again this year. Absolutely. Who do you think um, defensively, for this is a team, when you had to go up against the offenses yeah. of the SMUs and the UCS and the Cincinnati's, who is the standout on their defense? Yeah, well, Quindell Johnson. We're going to talk to him in, in a little bit. And as a defensive back, he had 81 tackles last year. And usually those DBs don't like to come up, <laughs> you know, and, and, and get dirty like that. But he will lower his head and make some tackles. So that's good. And, and with the quarterbacks in this league, you've got to have a great secondary. And Quindell Johnson does a great job for Memphis. There are nine starters returning on defense alone, a group that ranked third in the conference last year in points allowed in a conference that certainly knows how to put up some points. Let's uh, toss it over to Chuck now. We have some of the players joining us now, Calvin Austin and Quindell Johnson. Thank you guys for joining us. Chuck's going to ask the media to uh, ask you guys some questions. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, gentlemen, for joining us. Again, same routine as before. Just raise your hand in the, in the Zoom environment to, to get in the, uh, in the queue. And we'll start with Dan Tortora with Wake Up Call DT, please. Now, this is for you both. Just what you can say you took away from this COVID year with everything that, that we've had to go through, obviously safety and health being paramount, but just having to adjust last season and knowing this season that there may be games forfeited if issues arise. Um, I think last year was a, um, a extremely different experience, but I think it allowed us to just um, – focus on, on, on and, on, and control what we can control because, you know, we can't really control if if we catch it or if, an, or if another team catches it. But, you know, we just go out each day, work hard at practice, and, you know, we have that mindset that we're going to play that Saturday or Friday. And, you know, we really just don't try to, you know, care too much about if this happens or if this happens because, you know, I think last year allowed us to just come closer a as a team too and, you know, build to just – um, to continue to build and just try to reach our goal of, of winning the conference championship. I think Kelvin said, yep. I think Kelvin said it all. Last year, a big opportunity to cherish every moment with the team because you never knew what was going to happen day in, day out, every week, you know, cancel games, postpone the game. So, we just took it in as a team and we just cherished each other and cherished the moment because that whole year, you know, it, it was a lot. So we just had to cherish that moment. We took it day by day and, you know, it just, it was a lot. It was a lot for us mentally, for every, I would say for everyone mentally, you know, physically, 
it's just a, a big challenge. So just last year by itself was was big for everybody. So hopefully this year everything runs normal. And if, you know, like you said, we only can control what we can control. So if everything plays out itself, then we'll be okay. And then as far as uh, name, image, and likeness for you both, just what you have taken from it so far and what you think about the opportunity? Um, I think it's a big, big op opportunity for all athletes, you know. Um, I think that was something that had been in the works for years, you know, and to see um, athletes being able to capitalize on the things that they do on the field is um, big time. Um, you know, some of our guys have gotten certain deals and stuff like that. Um, me, me, me personally, you know, I haven't just dove into that yet, you know. I've just been trying to, you know, just really get ready for the season and stuff because, you know, everything is going to come w when it's supposed to. So I've just been staying patient. I say it's been a, a blessing for everybody because it's been a long time coming for all student athletes. Just getting that chance to get paid for your, your name, the image, likeness, all those things that come with it. But, you know, it can be a distraction to some, if some, because, you know, it kind of takes away what you are here for and that's to play football and play the game that you love. So me, it com if it comes, it comes. You know, I'm just worried about what this team has in store, what we have in store. So we just worry about, I'm just worried about the season. We worry about the season. And if, you know, those things come along the way, then they come. So right now, you know, it's, it's a blessing for everybody to have the opportunity to make money off their name. But, you know, as a whole, we're, we're just, just concentrating on the season and just preparing for the season. Take the next question from Evan Barnes for the Memphis Commercial Appeal, please. Calvin Quindell, always good seeing you guys. Um, for you, Calvin, just kind of how excited are you to kind of, you know, show more what you can do, maybe being more versatile? I know, you know, you had a, br a breakout season on, at receiver, but just kind of how excited are you going into this season, the show, to build on that? And then for both of you, maybe Quindell even too, um, how do you guys enjoy this, this quarterback competition from different perspectives? Calvin, you catching, Quindell, you testing them a little bit on defense? Um, yes, sir. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, come, coming from, from last year, I just want to continue that momentum in, into this season. You know, and I think our team as well just want to continue that mo momentum into this season. And so, you know, this off season and including the spring, you know, I've just been working on in, in, improving my game, my routes, just and really just understanding the entire game of football, recognizing coverages. And so um, I've just been trying to do that because I know with the quarterback room, you know, that's going to get figured out. We have tons of talented guys that can throw the ball and stuff. So really, I'm just focused on my job so I can make their job um, e easier. I feel like we have a great uh, quarterback competition going on right now. Just on my side, you know, just going against all of the quarterbacks that's in the running right now, just, you know, try to get them off guard. And, but it's it, it been good just trying to fill them out to see who, you know, can take the heat. So it, it's been fun. I'm, I'm ready for the fall to see what they do, the competition that goes on. So it's, it's good on our side. We'll go next to Isaac Simpson from Tiger Sports Report, please. Yeah, I have individual questions for both guys. Uh, and Calvin kind of touched on this a second ago with Evan's question. Uh, you had such a tremendous year last year. Do you put any pressure on, on yourself to kind of top last season's accomplishments? Um, I don't know if I would say pressure, but, you know, I love challenges. So, you know, I do have certain goals and um, challenges for, for for myself that I do want to accomplish. So, you know, um, coming, in, coming into this year, if I were to tell y'all some of my um, – some of the things that um, I personally want to accomplish, it'll, it'll sound crazy. But, you know, for the big scheme of things, I really just want to – um, accomplish those things to, to, for the betterment of the team, you know, because as as a team, as, as a team goes, you know, all the individual stats and accomplishments will follow. And for, for Quindell, um, the defense got better and better as the season went on last year, but there were some early season, season struggles. How much of that do you attribute to having a weird offseason? You have a new coordinator and Coach McIntyre coming in and implementing a new scheme. How, how much do you think that weird offseason attributed to that? It was tough, you know, not having spring ball and just going straight into the season, you know, you got to 
put bits and pieces together. So at the beginning of the season, it was it was kind of rough just trying to fill the defense out, fill the scheme out of uh, what Coach Mack was trying to do. But you know, as the season went on, the defense got comfortable, and then we started making more plays, and we started playing together more, and just you know, I said just being more comfortable and. This year, just by him coming back is, is huge for, for all the guys because most of the guys that's coming back didn't have a D.C. for more than two years. So that's big for us and big for this defense. So I, I'm excited. And we'll go to the final question from Brian Moss from Tiger Sports Report. I have a question for both of you. Qu Quindell, uh, what do you think you guys need to improve on the most defensively? Defensively, I just the the passing defense. You know, last year we gave up a lot of yards in the passing in the passing game. So I feel like we will improve that side of the uh, spectrum this year. Just like I said earlier, the new defense, the new scheme. But what we have this year, you know, just being more comfortable. I feel like that we're gonna nip that in the bud just a, a little bit more. We're gonna make sure that's straight on the the defensive side. So. Just the passing game uh, for us is going to be big, and I feel like we we will flourish in that. And for Calvin, uh, we all know about your speed. Are you the fastest person on the team, or is there, is there someone that has uh, your speed? Um, I guess you could say I'm probably one of the fastest on the team, but there's a couple guys that you know got really great speed. Um, Gabe Rogers, um, Kofi. Well, uh, Julian Barnett, they're, 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 there's a couple guys that got some really nice speed, but I think I'll take that top. Uh, I'll take that top <laughs> spot. <laughs> Thanks for the honesty, Calvin. It seems like we might have to, uh, I don't know, set up a, a race or something to determine this. Thank you guys so much for joining we can us. Do that. Looking forward to seeing you <laughs> September 4th against Nichols State. Thanks so Thank much, you. guys. Thank you for having us.